We got 15 Mac OS Sonoma features. Let's get into it. All right, so number one is gonna be maybe the most important, and I'm gonna share my screen here. This is actually built into Safari, believe it or not. So if you go ahead and you open up Safari down here, and let's just say you have this open, you can see it right here. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go up to the Safari drop down here and then go to settings, see it right there? Click on that, and then right over here you'll see profiles, see it? And you wanna go ahead and say start using profiles there. The cool thing with this is now what you can do, let me just explain, I can go work, profile, I'm gonna type that in right there, and then I'm gonna create a brand new profile. You'll see what it does. I'm gonna shut that down. It just opened up a brand new window, see that like that? And now I have a personal one behind here, and I just created a work profile, see that? If I click here, I can go be switch between them. I can switch between work and personal. Now why would you want this? Let's just assume you have two different email addresses or two different, you know, I guess like, you know, Facebook accounts or whatever, one for work and one is your personal. Don't you hate it when you have to like log out of one, log back into the other? Now you can actually have two different kind of profiles and have them open up basically at the same time so you don't have to keep switching back and forth. So you have all your work stuff on one browser and all your other stuff on the other. It works great, so create these profiles to keep your work and your personal stuff separated in Safari. So number two is probably the most common feature you're gonna see. It's called desktop widgets. So if you look at my screen, obviously before you could click over here in the time over here and you'd see all the widgets over here. But now what you can do is you can actually drag these over to your desktop or you can actually right click over here. And in here you can say edit widgets, see that? And then down here you can just take these widgets, if you can see them down here, and you can just drag these up into here, look at that. And you can just add them to your desktop like that. So let's just say I'm gonna go ahead and do that one more time. I'm gonna right click, hit edit widgets. I'm gonna go down here, I want this clock in there as well, I'm just gonna drop it there. So now you actually have desktop widgets, and again, you can remove them just as easily by right-clicking and clicking remove widgets if you have right-click enabled. So widgets are great, you can add them to your desktop. Just another feature built into Sonoma. All right, so the next one's gonna be wallpapers and screensavers, and it's just easier to show you on this one. So look over here. So here I am on my desktop. I'm gonna go up to the Apple icon, click on system settings. A couple of things you wanna do. So I actually changed, so if you go all the way down to, let me just see here, screensaver, you wanna go ahead and go down to this thing that's called, let me just see if I can find it here, landscape, see it right there? So I'm gonna click on that, make that my screensaver. These are all dynamic landscapes, and I'll show you what that means in a second. So I'm gonna click on right there. Then I'm gonna to go to screensavers, or I'm sorry, wallpaper. I'm sorry, and just make sure I have the same one basically from landscape, see that? So now if I go back to screensaver and I, and I wanna do a preview of this, let's just see what happens. So I'm gonna click on preview. It basically is a live, see that how it's moving there? It's a live wallpaper, you can see it right there. It's moving towards me. The cool thing too is if you go ahead and click off this, let's just say we go like this and we're, we're getting out of there, it'll actually stop, but every time it stops, it stops in a different spot. So if you have both your desktop and your also screensaver is the same thing, this dynamic wallpaper, every time it moves, it'll stop and it'll be slightly different than the last time. So you always have a slightly different wallpaper in there. It doesn't like reset, it just keeps moving and then stops where it left off. So it's kind of cool. Check it out, it's dynamic wallpapers. All right, the next one is gonna be called Sonoma Web Apps. And again, it's just easier to show you what I mean here. So let's say you're in Safari here, right? And this is in Safari, and I'm just on any website, nine to five Mac, but let's just say I wanna add this to my, my uh, dock bar down at the bottom. So what I wanna do is I wanna go up to File there, and then right here you can see Add to Dock. Watch what this does. I'm gonna add it there, and then I'll go ahead. It, it, you can actually rename it so it's not so long. So I'm just gonna call it nine to five Mac there, just like that, click Enter. So now it's added it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and minimize Safari. Now if I go down to my dock, you can see down in here, Look at right there, 9 to 5 Mac is, shows up kind of as an application, all right? See it there? You can change the logo as well if you don't like the way it looks down there, but there it is right there. So now if I click on this, watch what happens. It's gonna load it just like an app. If you notice, like even in the menu bar, it says 9 to 5 Mac there. So it looks like it's actually an app inside of your, you know, inside of Mac OS. It's not even the website really until you actually click off this. So it acts just like an app, which is weird. So you have to just check it out and try it out. So here it is. You can see the menu bar up here and everything like that. It doesn't even look like a browser. But then again, you click around in here, it still acts like that app. Now if you go off-site from here though, it'll actually bring up Safari and bring you somewhere else off-site. So just keep in mind that this is just for this one application, but you can create multiple, or not application, for the one website, but you can create multiple uh, websites down on your bar down there for the websites that you like to go to all the time. It's just a really good feature and it kind of is cool. You have to fool around with this um, just to get more out of it, but just check it out. 
All right, the next one's gonna be adding these 3D images, and I'll show you what this means. You can do it in things like Freeform, Keynote, Pages, but you have to update those programs. Make sure they're updated, otherwise it won't work right away. I actually found that out after installing Sonoma, then you have to update those programs. All right, so look at my screen. There's files called .usdz, and there's, if you go to Apple's site, they have a few sample ones, which is what I chose here. So you take this file, you can drop it right in here like this, and watch what happens. Now, let me go ahead and just open this up to kind of more of a bigger screen here for everybody to see, just like that. So you take this, and in the very middle, there's this little spiral thing. You click on it, and now watch what happens. I can actually take that file and move it all around in this 3D format. So there's a whole bunch of these different files out there that you can actually grab like this and you can do some really cool stuff and design work and stuff. So it actually, all these programs start taking these files now, but you just have to update them. Remember that. All right, the next one's actually a cool feature. So let's just say you're in photos, see my screen here, and you wanna share this with some friends and family and you have it on your iCloud account as well. You basically right click there, you go down to share right here, and there's a new setting in here. If you look way over here, let me just see copy iCloud link, see it right there? You click on that and it says preparing iCloud link, it takes a couple seconds and it says it's copied. So it copies it to the clipboard, all right? So now if you go into, you send this like via email to one of your family members, they go ahead and paste in that link. It's gonna go ahead and bring up that, op, you know, from, it says iCloud Photos. It's gonna give them the option to download that photo. So it's a safe way of giving photos to family and friends. Just a cool feature. All right, the next one's built into photos as well, and it's really cool. So let's say you have some food photos. Look at my screen here. So here's a, I guess it's pasta, spaghetti, whatever you want to call it. Here's a photo of some pasta. You go ahead and just right click on the photo. Now it recognizes it's food. It says look up food. See right there? I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Again, hit right click enabled. And look what happens. It brings up a whole bunch of recipes based off of what it sees in the photo. So now if you want to find easy recipes and like you can download pictures of food, remember them, right click on it like this and then you know use this feature and it'll grab recipes for you. You can go ahead and click on them and it's going to bring them off the web for you so you can go ahead and cook tonight's dinner. The next one's built in a spotlight. And so if you're searching for a system setting, watch what happens. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna click on spotlight, and I'm gonna type in Bluetooth. I already have it typed in, but you'll notice that it, here it is obviously, but there, now it has a toggle switch over here. So you can actually toggle Bluetooth on and off just like that, just through this spotlight. So you type in those system settings and it's gonna have some advanced or some other additional fields there on the right on some of them where you can toggle them on and off. So it's just another feature built in to spotlight. You tell me on this next one, is this really needed or not? I'm in pages right now, and you see here, what you can do, see this little icon that showed up? All that is is if you're typing something and you toggle basically between cap lock off and cap lock on. So I'm gonna turn cap lock on. That just warns you that cap locks is on. So now if I start typing, you can see it's on, but if I click cap, like, cap locks off, it goes off. So that icon just lets you know that you're in caps lock. I guess it's okay. It just seems really confusing, well not confusing, just overkill for what it is, but you tell me. If you use the weather app built into the Mac OS, they made some changes there as well. So here we are, you open up the weather app right here and you can see obviously it gives you all this weather information. It used to have wind as well. Here's the map over here. Just make sure you open the map up. Now what you wanna do is up in the upper right hand corner, there's like there's little three little maps here. You click on that, right? And you go down to wind, see it right there? The cool thing with this is this is a new wind map. It's gonna take a second to load in. You can see it loading in. I don't know why this thing takes so long. Maybe it's just in beta. But you can zoom in on any area in the United States you can see where, which direction the wind's blowing. So see this, now look down here, it's hard to see, I'm gonna see if I can zoom in even closer. It's very difficult to see there, but you see the arrows, how everything's moving this way to the left. And if I go over here, you know, things are moving this way. So if you wanna know which way the wind's blowing for some reason, maybe you're playing baseball that day and you wanna see if the wind's blowing out, maybe you can hit a home run. This will tell you, so you zoom in here, and you can actually see, it keeps getting smaller, so it's hard to show you, but you can kind of see it on my screen, but the wind's gonna be blowing one direction or the other. For all it's worth, it's a wind map, and I think it's kind of cool, but is it useful? I don't know. All right, so what did they add in preview? They added a form filling in icon, and I'll explain what that is. So if you have a PDF that has fields that needs to be filled in, uh, they have different fields where you have to put text in. I'm gonna go ahead and open one of those up right now. So here's just a sample kind of a sample document, you can see it in here. So all you have to do is look in here, and I'll go ahead and open this up just slightly. Up in the upper right hand corner up here, you can see this little icon that says show form filling toolbar. So watch, when I click on this, it lights up in blue all the areas that you can fill in, you know, that needs to be filled in with the form. So it shows you the items that you have to fill in, including the X's and stuff down here. You can see how it turned it light blue. And then obviously it adds a couple of the things like adding your signature um, and, and some other little things up here which are text related. But realistically, it just shows you where all the form, you know, fill, you know where you have to fill it out basically. So when you look at it, you can see how many things you have to fill out and exactly where to go. So it kind of makes it easier, but it's a designated icon up there and they added it to preview. 
The next two things they changed are built into notes in Mac OS. So if you look at notes over here, this is kind of a cool feature. So let's say you're doing a note, but you want to link to another note. This is actually really easy. So let's just say you kind of, I don't know what you want to build your own kind of like, you know, database or something where you have a whole bunch of notes, but you want to link back to other notes, right? I guess that's the easiest way to say it. So in here, all you have to do is, it's the two arrows to the right, watch. I'll click two arrows to the right. As soon as you do that, it opens up a list of which one to link to. So it's gonna give you all the different notes you can link to. I'm gonna go ahead and just click on one of them. But you can see it created a link there. Again, what you have to do is the, the arrows that go to the right here, just, I'm gonna do one of them there. But as soon as I type the second one, it opens up this window and then you can pick the note that you actually wanna go ahead and link to just like that. Obviously, if you click on this, it's gonna bring up the notes there. So it's very easy to use, but it just it's one of those little built-in features that's added to Sonoma, but it's really notes. I think it's useful for some things. So anyways, check it out. Another thing they added to notes, it's really simple as well. So if you're in a note just like this, you can go up to file now while you're in notes and you can go, let me just see if I can find it, open in pages, see it right there? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. What happens is you have to wait a couple seconds while pages loads up and it'll open up that note in pages. So if you've created a lot of notes, you wanna transfer to pages very easily just for some reason, maybe you're creating a document or something. File, open in pages does it, it's built in to Mac OS notes. The next one's for accessibility features, but it's really kind of useful for some cases. You can actually change the size of the text, make it smaller and bigger. I think that was in there before, and I'll show you how to do that. But then now you can change it specific to each individual application, at least for some of them. So if you go into your, you know, just go into the settings here and go down to accessibility right there. And then what you wanna do is you wanna click on display. See it right there? Now inside of here, you're gonna see text size. See it? You click on that, all right? So now what you can do is you can change over here the text size. Now look at my icons over to the right. They're gonna change different sizes, including the text behind there as well. So that's if you wanna change the text size to make it larger, but don't change the resolution of the screen. And then down here though, you can use preferred size settings for individual apps like Finder, Mail, Messages, Notes. So if you wanna make those bigger, like Notes is always such small text, you can actually just make Notes bigger, but not the other applications, which is nice. All right, the last one is game mode, and this is really cool if you're a gamer. Not really on Macs, but still, Apple has a game mode now. So when you open up a game in full screen, what you want to do is, you, what you, you know, in order to do that, this is what brings in game mode, is once you have the game running, let's say it's only a small window, you want to make sure you click on the green eye, you know, the green little bubble in the upper uh, left-hand corner and go to full screen, all right? As soon as you do that, you're going to have an icon in the upper right-hand corner, and then from there, you'll see that drop-down menu, and then it'll tell you if game mode is on or off. That's what you want to do. And what does game mode do? It optimizes the computer for you know frames per second. It kind of limits other things running in the background, which is really good for games. And even more importantly, it optimizes supposedly you know Bluetooth and wireless so that you can actually have your controller connect a little bit better to the system. So overall, it looks like they've optimized that for playing games, getting ready hopefully for something more in the future. But that's actually a really cool feature. All right, let's wrap this up. I hope you guys got something out of this. I think they're pretty cool features. Some of them, eh, we don't know, right? Overall, I think they're pretty useful. I'll do another video maybe on this. There's so many different features coming out. You let me know in the comments though if you actually like these or not or if you wanna see another video like this. And I will talk to you in the next video. Peace.